if someone has taken the time to think of me as a person and how I can interact with things, I like that. That makes me feel good because that means they must care about everyone else they're with. When you have a sensory experience, what happens is it sends a little electronic pulse through your neural synapses, the synapses connect and that leaves a little pathway and over time those pathways become established and it's giving you information about the world, that's what our senses do, all our learning comes to us through our senses and these are senses that can be impaired and can vary just like any of the other senses. In a typical brain this much space is taken up with processing language. If I'm somebody who has a difficulty processing language, this isn't somebody who doesn't understand language, this is somebody who has a difficulty with language. So it might be that I'm speaking a language that is not my mother tongue, it could be that I have a condition like ADHD or autism that affects my processing of language, it, you know, for whatever reason, this could be how much space is taken up in my brain by processing language. And I've got less space left over for thinking about what you're saying. If you can just say it concisely and allow people time to digest and take it on board, more learning comes out of that, more engagement comes out of it. So when I do my stories, I try and focus very clearly on just one sense at a time. So they're multi-sensory and that stories cover all the senses, but at any one time you're only being asked to process one thing. You can be really ambitious with this. You can think about what those students are going to experience later in their lives. Say, I don't like this sort of touch experience. The first time I tell the story, you see it happen to me and you see that I survive. The next time I tell the story, you see it happen to me and I'm closer to you and we both survive. And the next time I tell the story, I just expect you to just, you know, do a little bit like that and, and you build it up like that. So you can use it to help people to begin to tolerate and experience stimulus. Thank you very much for listening. with the long sides touching. <laughs> you notice straight away you're, you're instantly got that joint attention, but also you're saying, no, no, not quite there, turn it the other way up, turn it around. So you've identified there's something wrong and you've instantly used your language to put it right. Now for a lot, of, I'm sure a lot of the children you're working with, that's going to be really, really difficult.
first thing you need to do when you're looking at what model you're going to use for the child is to look at their skill level and look at what you're aiming for. The linguistic concepts, the information carrying words, and the social communication. Where they get to the stage where it's the end of the session, we photograph the build. Sometimes we will give them the photograph of what the build looks like. We promise them it will not change, it will stay like it is, and sometimes we actually take the build and we lock it in the cupboard. <laughs> they have quite a nice little photo album at the end of their sessions with all of their builds in, which is nice for them to take home or to share with their classmates or their teachers or whatever, or just to have a flick through. You're there to interact, to work with a person. No matter how challenging or difficult you might find it, and not just around autism, but mental health. Okay? Even people that have just suffered with things in their life, anything that you can do to interact and open a person up. Try and do things in a throwaway way, you know, around the corner. Not direct. Direct is too personal. Okay, it can make me shut down, it can make me just tighten up. I'm not gonna go there, okay? Find the way of accessing me. Whether you be a professional or a parent, please do that for me. Go and find this, go and find the person. Best person to ever work with me was someone that actually came over and went, hi Austin, I'm gonna spend some time working with you. They interacted with me, they showed things to me. They didn't tell me to do things, they brought me books. They did things on a blackboard. It rocked my world. Someone came into my world and spent time interacting with me on my level. Most important thing that's ever happened in my life. I had an exhibition um, of installations that are for the public to learn from about sensory processing difficulties and I really wanted to help the public just have a little glimpse, a little understanding of um, how we can support everyone in our community. So I brought them along today for you to try out. I explored specifically the autistic sensory world and um, made objects to put you into a situation yourself of how a sensory processing difficulty might feel. Oliver Sacks um, wrote a book called Migraine and within that book he visualised the breakdown to the stages that your brain goes through when you, when you have a migraine. So Lola's World is based on that. It's giving you an opportunity to see yourself and your surroundings within that kind of fragmented viewpoint. This is a quote from a guy called Tim who I met at the Autism Show last year and he looked in the mirror and he said, Becky, I see myself like that every morning, which means I can't shave. He just can't piece himself together to be able to equally shave both sides of his face. And then we've got Being Ben, and this is based on lots and lots of people who described um, it difficult to filter out unnecessary sounds in their environment. So um, it's almost like everything's at this constant volume. In the storytelling space, we are braver, we are bolder, we are better able to cope with things that we find difficult. So if you're working with a young person who finds a particular sensory experience difficult, in the story, they will be a little bit braver. All the moves that we use and all the asanas is, is a lead up for the body being able to relax, to be relaxed in the body, relaxed in the mind, and relaxed in the breath, becomes a safe place to go. We found quite quickly is that people, the children's language skills really improved. Understanding of language and use of language and general communication really, really improved quite rapidly. Over 80% of people on the autistic spectrum tend to have a sensory processing difficulty as well. Sometimes it goes missed and we tend to um, approach behaviours rather than possibly a sensory need. Wherever it is, do the same for whoever it is that you work for. Go and meet them on their side of the fence, okay? Go and interact with them. 